and welcome to episode 2 of Project T80. This was always intended to be a short series where I could quickly build a model that would allow me to discover and learn new techniques, something I always relish. In episode 1 you'll have seen the start of the project and the results of my mammoth 3D printing session. A lot's happened since then. The base plates have been removed from the main 3D prints and I've tidied up the mating surfaces. I designed these parts so that they didn't need any support material and was very pleased just how clean and relatively smooth they were. I deliberately designed the body as a complete shell as I didn't know exactly how much of the underside it needed cutting away to fit the wheels and chassis. Any holes that I did make would need support material during printing anyway which would have used almost as much plastic. These parts were designed to have 3mm brass dowels to help pin and align the main body parts together. The dowel pins were made as long as possible and just super glued into place. This worked out really well with a good positive fit keeping everything straight and square. I can now fully bond these three parts of the body shell together using liquid solvent adhesive. I use Plastic Magic which works with most plastics and crucially ABS. I'd previously used it extensively on the mouse and it worked well. The six wheels were also cleaned up and glued together. The seam was filled with milliput and a flat was filed on each of the tyres. The spoke unit just pushes into place and is a really good fit. I drilled a couple of small holes in the back of the wheel to help push out the spoke unit just in case it got stuck in the tyre. I'll be able to paint these separately from the tyres. I'm really happy with this technique for making the wheels and I'll use it again on… well you'll just have to wait and see. Aligning and joining the two halves of the chassis together went far better than I'd imagined, partially helped by the massive fixing I'd designed. It was easy to clean up although the fixing posts needed to be rescued with some milliput. The wheels bolted straight into place but I had to cut down the centre pair as there was no way they would fit given the thickness of the bodywork. With the body shell now in one piece I sanded it down and filled the worst of the joins and layer lines. The underside has now been cut away to accommodate the chassis and wheels which now fit together well under the bodywork. This was done carefully in stages by measuring, cutting, test fitting and trimming until everything fitted neatly into place. I've also marked out roughly where the cockpit will go, now I just had to work out how to make it. As you can see there's not much of the wheels and tyres visible below the T80, with the spokes barely showing at all. Don't worry about the scratches in the bodywork, they're getting fixed soon. I decided that vacuum forming was the best route to take with the cockpit of the T80 and carefully cut out the hole in the bodywork with my Dremel. The part I cut out was then milliputted back into the hole to try and make sure all the contours matched up again. This blank would be the master from which the vacuum form parts could be made. The exhaust for the T80 were 3D printed as a strip so that they could be installed from behind the bodywork. I decided to go with rectangular exhausts which was typical of Daimler-Benz engines of the period. These exhaust strips fitted neatly into slots I carefully marked out and cut into the sides of the bodywork. I think they'll look fine when they're painted up and glued into place. They'll add a nice bit of detail to the super streamlined shape of the T80. I may drill them right out, I think that'll look pretty cool and it won't take long to do. The big problem with 3D prints is layer lines. They can be sanded down but it's hard to get rid of them completely. Fortunately someone's come up with a solution. This is XTC 3D which is basically a brush on clear epoxy resin. It seems very much like a gel coat for fiberglass moulding but I didn't want to take any chances so decided to buy this which is recommended for 3D prints. It's a simple two part solution which you can mix up either by weight or by volume. Then it's just a case of brushing it on, it seems simple enough, how hard can it be? With the worst of the layer lines and joins filled I mixed up a batch and decided to give it a go. It's really hard to judge just how much to mix up 
I had absolutely no idea and was worried about running out part way through and having to blend in two batches. It actually goes on incredibly well and hardly runs at all. You can see how smooth it makes the surface by the glossy finish it gives to the bodywork. I put plenty in the main intake at the front as there was little chance of me hand sanding a smooth finish in there. I have to say this was one of the most rewarding stages of this build as this product went on so well and was going to save me a ton of work. I found out a little goes a long way with this material so I have a lot left in the bottles. If you have any ideas for other projects you'd like me to have a go at and use up some more XTC 3D leave them in the comments. I have some of my own already lined up but you'll have to wait and see what I have planned. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you see the latest episodes of my projects as soon as they go live. You can also follow Staples and Vine on Instagram, Facebook and my blog on the Staples and Vine website where you can pick up some great merchandise. Just follow the links in the description. With the underside done I started on the sides and then turned the body shell over to work on the top. With most of the upper surface done the epoxy started to go off just as I was doing the left wing. Fortunately I did get it covered but it had ridges in it. I just have to sand it back when it had hardened. I reckon the pot life was about 15 minutes. I'll have to remember that for next time. And here we are after it's cured overnight. It's not only smoothed the surface but toughened up the body shell a lot. There are some small areas I've missed and you can see the left wing needs some work but it's a great result. This is a product I'll definitely use again. After some careful inspection I used a marker pen to show me where I needed some more epoxy and went around retouching. This went fine with the second coat bonding well with the first. The XTC 3D gave a really hard finish which meant I could get a good smooth surface with some sanding. The next stage was to break out the elbow grease and sand down any runs, generally smoothing out the entire surface of the T80. This all took a very long time, constantly filling, filing and sanding over and over again to try and get a finish good enough for paint. And so I didn't go completely mad, I made a start on the cockpit. I don't have a lot of information on this, just a few photos, but I've made a pretty good stab at it and you won't see much anyway. These are the rough 3D printed parts without any detail added. The steering wheel is a bit thin so I'll build that up with Milliput but everything else looks good. And here's how they'll fit into the cockpit after adding some detail and beefing up the steering wheel. It's not massively detailed but there was no need to go crazy in there. It'll look perfectly fine painted and with decals added to the instruments. Right on time the Vacform canopy arrived. One sheet in white styrene, the other in clear. That's the great thing about being part of a model club. People share and help one another out. Thanks go out to Kevin and Steve. Cheers guys. With the white styrene cut, glued and blended into place, the clear sheet can be installed from the inside. This will make a great cockpit for the T80. It's coming together really well. 
I've also carefully scribed on the few panel lines there are on this super sleek body shell. And here it is fully assembled. There are a few tiny details to add, but I'm now ready for paint. Hopefully the primer won't show up too many areas that need my attention. I have a few ideas for paint schemes for the T80, but more on that in the next episode. As you can see from my channel, I always have lots of projects going on, which I hope you'll find interesting. You can even explore in more depth the techniques I use in my popular how-to series. I hope you're enjoying Project T80. If you are, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. If you have any questions about the T80, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.